Hi booktube, my name is Sarah and welcome to The Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with my November 2021 TBR. Say it with me everybody, it's TBR time, yay! And as a second yay, it is nonfiction November, yay! <laughs> so my nonfiction November books are also going to be in this video. I debated on splitting the video and doing one nonfiction November video and then one of all of the rest of the craziness of my uh, November TBR, but I decided to put them all in one. But what I'm going to do is talk about the nonfiction November books first. So for those of you who don't care about the rest of my TBR and are just here for nonfiction November stuff, then you can turn it off as soon as you've watched that part of it, and that's fine. So Nonfiction November is an event hosted every year by the lovely Olive over to Book Olive. Link below to her announcement video for 2021. So the way she works this is that she picks words, um, four words every year, and you can interpret those words however you want in order to pick the books for your TBR or what the books that you're going to read in November. However, as Olive likes to say, as long as you read one nonfiction book in November, you've met the challenge, right? You only need to read one. However, the prompts are there to add an extra layer of fun um, for those of us who kind of like to do that kind of thing. And I did pick a book for every prompt plus an extra book that I want to try and get to, an extra nonfiction book that I want to try and get to in November. So I'm going to go through the prompts, share with you guys what I'm reading. And yeah, I am really, really excited. I've been participating in nonfiction November, I think for five years. I think my first year on booktube, I didn't do it. But I am going into year six in January of being here on book two. So yeah, I think I've done it pretty much every year except for my first year. So that's exciting. That's exciting. So the first prompt that, uh, or the first word, I, I don't know if these are in the order that Olive gave them. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. The first word is collection. So I, I kind of, what I did was that I looked for books that I kind of wanted to read and then I wanted to see how I could slot them in. <laughs> in some of these cases, in other cases, um, for two of the books, um, I, uh, I picked them based on the, on the prompt word for another couple of the books. It's like, how can I fit this one in? So the first book for collection, I borrowed this one from the library. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me post a picture of this one yesterday. And we have The Victorian House, and this is by Judith Flanders. I am very much looking forward to this one. So the first year that I did nonfiction November, I read um, The Victorian's Guide. No, what was it called? The one by Teresa O'Neill, uh, the women, the Victorian Women's Guide, something like that. It was a fun, humorous book about being what it would have been like to be a woman in Victorian England. And then a couple of years ago, I read The Invention of Murder by Judith Flanders, which I really liked. And also a couple of years ago at Christmas, I read The Biography of Christmas by the same author. And I like that one too. So when I was looking through her books and I saw this one, I was kind of in the mood to read like a Victorian um guide, if you will. Now, this isn't going to be anything like funny or humorous. Um, what? Okay, so the, the subtitle is Domestic Life from Childbirth to Deathbed. So yeah, this one sounds really good. Um, how it fits in collection, you might be asking. So they have like the house, like how a Victorian house may have been laid out. And I believe... Um, so that's the introduction. Yeah. So each chapter is like, this one is the bedroom. So it's a collection. You go through the house in a collection, um, nursery, the bedroom, the drawing room, uh, the street. So, and there's great, um, graphics or images in here. So yeah, this one is not available on audio. I was going to buy a copy of this for myself, um, from Amazon, but I decided to check the library and they had it. So I decided to borrow it. I, there's just something about reading a nice hardcover library book with that crinkly paper. <laughs> so I was all for it. So yeah, so this is my one for the prompt collection. Let me put it over there. So the next one is industry. So a few weeks ago, Audible was doing a buy two audiobooks for one credit sale. And I was looking through them all. They didn't really have a lot, but then this book caught my eye. And this was before Olive had put out her announcement video. And I bought it because I thought, oh, this is something I'll definitely read at some point. And then when she announced the prompts, I was like, oh, that book's going to fit perfectly. So the book I picked for industry is Murdered, Mid Murdered Midas by Charlotte Gray, subtitled A Millionaire, His Goldmine, and a Strange Death 
in an, on an island paradise. This is about a man whose name I cannot remember, but he was born in the U.S. This is uh, true crime. He was born in the United States, and then he made his fortune here in Canada in northern Ontario in gold mines, and then eventually ended up getting murdered in, I think, the Bahamas or something like that. So it's like a historical true crime, and I'm like all for this. This sounds so good. It's totally right up my street, as they say. And it fits industry because gold mining is an industry. <laughs> I always get so pleased with myself, like pat myself on the back when I, <laughs> when I figured these ones out. Um, the next prompt is style. And when I heard this one, I started thinking, oh gosh, what, what, what am I going to read for this? And I was kind of looking over at my shelves and I saw this book out of the corner of my eye and I went, oh, that's perfect. So the book I'm reading for style is Broken by Jenny Lawson. Broken in the best possible way. I have read her other two books. I love Jenny Lawson's books. I think they're fabulous. So the, her first book was Let's Pretend This Never Happened. Her second book was Furiously Happy. This is her third. It came out earlier this year. And clearly this woman has a style all of her own. <laughs> That's how I'm fitting it in with style. Um, I love the cover. on Like it's, it's, it's both creepy and kind of charming in the same way. So yeah, I am a big, big fan of hers. I am really looking forward to reading this. Um, these are just like, so Jenny Lawson, for those of you who don't know, she's known as the blog S online and she, I follow her on Instagram as well. She does, um, uh, she does blogs. She's, she's a blogger and she suffers from several different, uh, mental afflictions. I guess she has depression. She has um, anxiety. She has all kinds. And like her first two books talk very heavily about her dealing with those things. And I'm assuming this is just going to be more of that as well. They could be, um, I don't know whether these are all blog posts or what, but her stuff is just charming and I really like it. And she is like laugh out loud funny. So I am really, really looking forward to finally getting to this one. I've had it for too long sitting on my shelf. Perfect ex excuse to finally get to it. And then the last prompt, but not my last nonfiction November pick, uh, the last prompt is treatment. So originally when I saw all of mentioned this one, I was going to reread Bellevue by David Oshinsky. I think read, wrote that one. I read it twice now, um, both times for nonfiction November. It is a favorite of mine. If you are looking for something for this prompt, I highly recommend Bellevue. Um, it is the story of the history of Bellevue Hospital in New York City. So while I was looking that up on Goodreads to see when the last time I read it was, because I was like, I want to give it at least two or three years between rereads. Um, this book that I ended up picking was actually said like people who read this might like this book. And I was like, Ooh, that one sounds good. Another one, as they say, right up my street. So for the prompt of treatment, I am reading Damnation Island by Stacey Horn, uh, subtitled Poor, Sick, Mad, and Criminal in 19th Century New York. So this is about, I believe, Roosevelt Island, where they used to send like the criminally insane back in the 19th century. I think the journalist Nellie Bly, is this where she went, like she got herself admitted just so she could see the inside workings of this hospital. I'm pretty sure it was it was one of the institutions on Roosevelt Island, but correct me if I'm wrong. I'll find out when I read the book. But yeah, this one sounds really interesting. This, I don't know why medical history really interests me. And um, yeah, this one I am looking forward to getting to. And I know that sounds weird for this kind of book, but I am. I'm kind of fascinated with this. And the last book for nonfiction November, the extra book as I'm calling it, is one that I talked about a few weeks ago on my weekly reads video that I had pre-ordered this one. I am so excited for this one to come out. It releases November 2nd, so perfect. I did end up... Uh, pre-ordering an audio copy of it because it's narrated by the author and I am a huge fan, huge, huge fan of this guy. So I will be reading Talking to Canadians by the great Rick Mercer. Uh, oh my gosh, if you are a Canadian, you know Rick Mercer. <laughs> he has been on so many different shows. He did, he got his like start, he was born in Newfoundland and then he got his start. He did this special for the CBC called Talking to Americans. You can find it on YouTube. It's like 20 plus years old. And then he started working on a TV show called This Hour Has 22 Minutes, which is political satire, Canadian political satire. And then he had his own show called The Mercer Report, where he went all over the country and interviewed like everybody from prime ministers and politicians to like your average everyday fisherman, you know, 
out in the Bay of Fundy doing whatever, like, you know, people off the coast of PEI, lobster fishing or whatever. So, I mean, he's fabulous. He's absolutely fabulous. And he stopped a show a number of years ago. And I was so sad because my father and I loved watching his stuff. Um, but this is his memoir. So I am very, very excited to read it. He is a big advocate for gay rights. Um, he has walked in the Pride Parade. Him and his partner have walked in the Pride Parade together. Um, he's very much stands up for like bullies. And on his show on the Mercer Report, he used to do these rants. He was kind of known for these rants at the end of every episode where it would be like a minute long and he would be walking through the streets of Toronto. Like it was always um, graffitied, like these graffitied alleys. And he'd talk about something that happened that week that his rant on what happened, kind of an idea. And some of them like were legendary. Again, you can look them up on YouTube, but he's hilarious. And I'm super excited about getting to this one. So yay. I'm glad it's coming out in November. It's perfect. So that's it for nonfiction November. So for those of you who only wanted to see that, thank you so much for watching this video. If anyone else wants, or the rest of you want to see the rest of the madness that is my November 2021 TBR, please grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea and put your feet up and let's go through the rest of the books. <laughs> there are in total, including the nonfiction November books, 44 <laughs> books on my TBR for November. So not completely out of the realm of possibility, you guys, not completely out of the realm of possibility. I, at the time of filming this video or no, when this, I'm hoping, I'm hoping by the end of this month, I should finish at 32 books for the month of October. So 44 is not completely out of the realm of possibility, but as you guys know, I just like to give myself a lot of choice and I like to break my books down into categories. So the first little category we have here is NetGalley Audio. So over the past few weeks, I've been requesting a lot of audiobooks on NetGalley and went, oh shoot, I really should listen to these. So I have right now five of them that I still need to listen to. So I want to get them all done in, in, uh, in November. And then I don't think I'm going to request any more audiobooks on NetGalley. I don't particularly like the NetGalley, like the player on NetGalley um, that they have. So it's fine. I'll just, believe me, I have more than enough ERCs from NetGalley to read. So the books for uh, this, pro this section are Find Me in the Dark by Dia Poirier. Now I read a book by her in October and I didn't mind it. It was cute. Not cute. I shouldn't say cute. It was a thriller. It wasn't bad, but I don't know if this, I think this is not, this is part of a different series, but it's a thriller. I'm looking forward to it. Then there's Love, Chai and Other Four Letter Words by Annika Sharma. Um, this one looks really, really adorable. It, I think it's a contemporary romance. I'm pretty sure it's a contemporary romance. Looks super cute. I'm really looking forward to it. The next one is Our Little Secret by Kirsten Mod Modulin. This is another thriller. Pardon me. It's available on KU. It's already been published, but um, I have the audio downloaded on my phone to listen to. So looking forward to getting to this one. Then we have Keychain by Heidi Hutchinson. This is book three in the Common Thread series. So this series is part of the Smarty Pants Romance set of books, which is which are books that are set in the Winston Brothers universe by Penny Reed. So there are other characters. They're written by other authors. They may take place in other places, but they all kind of revolve around the area of, is it Green, Green Valley? something green, something Kentucky. I can't remember the town that the Winston brothers live in, but it's, it's around that kind of area. So, and then the last one for this is one for the books by Jen McKinley. This is a cozy mystery and it is book number 11 in the library and lovers mystery series. I don't think I've read any of the other books in this series, but you guys know I'll jump into a series at whatever point it doesn't bother me. I'm looking forward to it. So then I have my net galley jar picks. So I do have, can I reach it? without knocking everything over? The answer would be no. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. So I have my jar here <laughs> and I have a whole bunch, a whole bunch of prompts written on these little tiny cards. Like this one says summer. So I did this off camera because for this month, I wanted to pick only Christmas books. Now I know in December I do read like all I read in December are holiday themed books, but I have a backlog of holiday themed books from like last year and previous years and stuff that I've purchased, but this is strictly NetGalley. So I want to get through those ones from, you know, 
books of Christmas past, essentially. So that's why I picked these off camera because it took a little bit longer for me to not only use the prompt, but um, use the prompt to pick a holiday theme book. So here are my picks for that. So the first one I got was new release. So I actually went with a book that is coming out in October. I think at the time of the filming of this video, it will have already been released. And that is going to be The Christmas Escape by Sarah Morgan. I am so excited. I've been reading her Christmas books every single year. I love them so much. I cannot wait for this one. The next book that, uh, the next prompt I had was Outside North America. And the book I picked for that was Murder at an Irish Christmas by Charlene O'Connor. Uh, this is the sixth book in an Irish village mystery series. So it's another cozy mystery series. Cannot wait. The next prompt I got was title begins with the. So the word the has to be the first word in the title. And I will be reading The Widow's Christmas Surprise by Jenna Jackson. This is book five in the Widow's Club series. It is a Regency romance, Christmas Regency. Yay on that one. The next prompt I got was Double Up. And I'd forgotten what this one was. And then I remembered just to pick two books. <laughs> so I had to pick two books. So I've got Two, two here. So the first one that I got for this one was One Winter's Night by Kylie Dunbar. If you watch my most recent, recent uh, weekly reads video, I read another book by this author and I did enjoy it. So I'll be reading this one. It's the second book in the Kelsey Anderson series. I have not read the first one. I'm not sure how closely they tie to each other. I'll find out when I read the book. And the second book for this one I will be reading is Happily This Christmas by Susan Mallory. This is the sixth book in the Happily Ink series. Yes, I have literally had this on my shelf since last Christmas. I need to get it read. So that one is definitely is my second book for the double up prompt. And then I got page number. So this one was fun. So what I did was I sorted my um, NetGalley TBR from by page number and then I found what the highest page number was and then I did a number randomizer from one to whatever that page number was and the page number that came up was 439 so my goal was to find a book as close to number four uh, as close to in page number to 439 as I could so the book that I came up with was Christmas Kisses with My Cowboy and this is an anthology and it's by Diana Palmer Marina Adair and Kate Pierce and this one came in at 448 pages so it was nine pages more than what I got for the number so it fits it fits um I'm looking forward to this one I do love a good cowboy anthology I love a good cowboy book anthology is just an extra bonus on that one and the last prompt that I got was single person book needed to have a single person on the cover and the one I picked for that one I meant to get to this one last year and I didn't, is A Highlander is Coming to Town by Laura Trentum. This is book number three in the Highland Georgia series. So yay on this one. Of course, single person, just the one guy on the cover. It fits. Um, the next group of books here that I have is TBR Randomizer. So essentially what I did here was there's a lot of books that I bought from Kindle, from Kobo, from just in general, a lot of books that I have that I haven't gotten to yet and I want to get to them. So what I kind of did was this was mostly on um, mostly on uh, Kindle because I have my biggest majority of books on Kindle is I kind of just looked at what I've bought over the last six or eight months. And I'm like, I bought these books because I really wanted to read them. So let's get to them. So the first book that I have here is Cross the Line by Julie Johnson. And this is book number two in the Boston Love series. I read the first book earlier this year and I really liked it. So I'm really looking forward to this one. The next one is a book that I actually got. I pre-ordered it and it's a YA contemporary and it's called Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. I don't know too much about this one, but it looks super cute. I saw it on a list on Goodreads and I went ahead and pre-ordered it and it's just sitting on my Kindle need to get it read. Uh, next up, we have Tied Up with Love by Holly Martin. Um, Holly Martin is a favorite of mine. She writes, most of her stuff is on KU and her stuff is just charming and adorable. So I am looking forward to this one very much. The next one um, is The Hotel at Honeymoon Station by Tilly Tennant. Now I actually have this one from NetGalley, but because I'm such a big fan of Tilly Tennant, I buy the copies, like I buy the digital editions when they come out. And oftentimes I will also go and buy the physical edition because again, I'm a big fan of hers. So this one I really want to get to. I'm looking forward to it. The next one I have, the, the purpose behind this one uh, is The Road to Rose Bend by Naima Simone. I meant to read this over the summer, but I never got around to it. 
I need to read it in November because I have pre-ordered the second book in the series, the Christmas book from the UK because it's going to have the, this is the UK edition of this book. Um, and I've pre-ordered the UK edition of the Christmas one and I want to read that one in December. So I need to get this one read in November. That's kind of my goal. So I am looking forward to getting to this one. First book in the Rose Bend series. And last but not least, The Me I Used to Be by Jennifer Ryan. I've had this one sitting for far too long on my Kobo and I need to get to it. Um, I actually bought it did like as an audiobook for my Kobo. Um, so I'm very, very much looking forward to getting to this one. It's about a woman who was wrongly convicted of a crime and then she's released from prison and has come home. So I'm interested. So the next set of books I'm calling the Harlequin ebook randomizer. I have a ridiculous number of books on the Glow app from Harlequin of ebooks. So I went and picked Christmas books that I have. And again, I've mentioned this before. If I get books from Harlequin from NetGalley, I tend to then go ahead and purchase the e-copy for the Glows because oftentimes the formatting on the NetGalley books is not fantastic and I prefer reading off the Glow app in that situation. So of course, and I also want to support the authors because I love these books. You guys know that. So these are five books that came out. Is it five? Five books that came out last Christmas season. They're all Christmas themed that I want to get to now. <laughs> So the first one we have here is Alaskan Christmas Redemption by Belle Calhoun. This is the third book in the Home to Owl Creek series. It is a love-inspired novel. Then we have Tudor Christmas Tidings by Blythe Gifford, Jenny Fletcher, and Amanda McCabe. This is a Harlequin historical. It's three short stories all about Tudor times at Christmas. I'm intrigued. Cool. Call me intrigued. Um, speaking of intrigued, the next one I have is Close Range Christmas by the great Nicole Helm. This is the sixth book in the Badlands Cop series, and it's a Harlequin intrigue novel. The next one is Mountain Mistletoe Christmas by Patricia Johns. This is the second book in the Second Chance Club series, and it is a Harlequin heartwarming, which is their sweet line. There is no adult content in these books, and I love them. And then last but not least, we have Christmas Reunion in Paris by Liz Fielding. This is the first book in the Christmas at the Harrington Park Hotel series. Looks adorable. Cannot wait. So the one thing you're going to notice is that I did not go to the library this month. Mainly because I read zero, no, two, two, two of like the six library books I picked, I read in October and I didn't get to any of the rest of them. They're all going back to the library. So I'm like, you know what? I have so many books that I want to get through that I don't need to be going to the library right now. Maybe I will later on, you know, maybe next summer. Maybe I'll go and just pick up one or two. I do like utilizing my library. However, I do utilize it digitally a lot. So they are getting my support that way. Um, so instead, what I decide to do, because I have all these series I'm working on, I'm like, I used to do this. I used to go and randomly pick series to read the next in the series for. So that's what I'm doing, series picks. So I've got five books. What I did was I have a list of series that I'm working on. I picked random numbers and picked random series and I'm just reading the next book in the series. That's pretty much what I did for this. So the first one is Carrot Cake Murder by the great Joanne Fluke. This is the 10th book in the Hannah Swenson series. I'm very much looking forward to this one. I do adore this series. It's so cute. The next one is Cold Case Takedown by Jessica R. Patch. This is the first book in the Cold Case Investigation series. So I read the second book back in August, I think. This is a love-inspired suspense novel, so I'm looking forward now to going back and reading the first book and getting caught up with this one. The next series we have is Colton's Dangerous Liaison by uh, Regan Black. This is the first book in the Colton's of Grave Gulch series, and this is a Harlequin romantic suspense novel. I have read other books, a few other books, in the Colton's of Grave Gulch series, but I'm looking forward to going back, of course, and starting at the beginning. Speaking of earlier, I mentioned the Winston Brothers. This one completely by chance came up. I'll be reading Beard With Me by Penny Reed. This is book six in the Winston Brothers series. I'm getting so close to getting this series done. And a part of me is super excited about having the series done. And this other part of me is sad because it's such a good series. It's such a good series. I love it so much. And the last book for my series picks is A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. This is the second book in a League of Extraordinary Women series. I read book one back in the summertime, really enjoyed it, really looking forward to this one. 
Then I have kind of a little mess of books here. <laughs> I'm calling this, well, okay, book club. For one thing, for those of you who follow um, me and Chloe and Brie, we used to do the Book Sisters book club. Due to life and circumstance and things that are kind of going on, the three of us mutually decided that maybe it was time to bring it to a close. So there is no video this month if you're you're going to be looking for it. There'll be no more book club for that going forward. But I'm still kind of calling this book club because I do oftentimes participate with Nicole over at Who Picked This Book. I'm on her channel sometimes for her book chats about books and I have one that is going to be on this list. And then I have a book that I'm on an ARC team for that I want to get read this month. And then book, a couple books I want to read for the podcast. Um, so the book club with Nicole, I'll be reading Stay Hidden by Julianne Lindsay. This is the fourth book in the Heartland Heroes series. Now, I read book one and two and I was on the live show for those. Book three, I'm actually pushing myself to read that one this month. I'll probably be reading this as you guys are watching this video. The first book, or this, the third book in the series. Because <clears throat> that live show will be on November the 3rd. And I just thought there's no way I'm going to have time to read that book in three days. Like, I just didn't think it's like early in the week. Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays tend to be busy for me with work and going into the office. So I'm like, let's just read it in October and get it done. And then I'm ready to go for um, the live show on the 3rd. So for Stay Hidden, the live show is going to be on the 10th of, of November. So I'm looking forward to that one. And then I am now on Julianne Lindsay's ARC team. I am so excited about that. She has a new book coming out in November, and that's Beating the Rap, of course, by Julianne Lindsay. It is a cozy mystery, and it's uh, book number three in the Bonnie and Clyde mystery series. I cannot wait. This one I'm going to be getting read, I'm hoping, by the 15th of November, so I can do my review for you guys. I believe it comes out towards the end of the month. So I can get this reviewed for you guys before it releases. And then in November, we're going to be talking to the great Tara Taylor Quinn on the podcast about her Christmas books. And there are two of them that I want to read. Her most recent release is Her Christmas Future by, of course, Tara Taylor Quinn. It's book seven in the Parent Portal series. And then I want to read one of her older books, which is The Holiday Visitor, again, by Tara Taylor Quinn. Looking forward to this one very much as well. Two more little sections here, you guys. Two more. Almost done. Kindle Unlimited. You guys know I've been working on trying to read some Kindle Unlimited books since I'm paying for the service itself. So I randomly picked three of them. I do have, I can't show you because it's on my phone, but I have those small decision, that small decision wheel thing on my phone. And I loaded in like 50 different Kindle Unlimited titles. So literally at the beginning of the month, I'm just spinning the wheel. Or when I pick my TBR, I'm just spinning the wheel. And whichever three books come up, come up are the three I'm going to read. So I got Falling for Your Best Friend by Emma St. Clair. This is book number five in the Love Clichés Sweet Rom-Com series. Looks adorable. I was going to start at book one. I'm like, but I got book five and I don't care. I'll read them out of order. It's fine. The next one we have is Finding Hope at Lighthouse Cove by Jessica Redland. This is book three in the Welcome to Witsboro Bay series. This, I believe, is a chick lit novel. I have read her before. I like her books. Looking forward to this one. And the last one is The Sweet Shop of Second Chances by Hannah Lynn. This is book number one in the Holly Berry Sweet Shop series. Sounds absolutely adorable. Cannot wait to read it. And last but not least, four more Baby Stars Club books. I got through, as of filming this, I am almost done all my Baby Stars Club books that I picked for the month of October. So I thought I'd share with you guys the ones for the month of November. We have Dawn's Big Move by Anna M. Martin, Baby Sitter's Club book number 67. This is when this is when the series really started to change. That we had Dawn moving back to California and she would only be back in Stony Brook every six months. So she would switch back and forth. And then we have um, Jesse and the Bad Babysitter is book number 68, um, trying to replace Dawn essentially. And then a mystery, Claudia and the Mystery at the Museum, Babysitter's Club Mystery number 11. And last but not least, Get Well Soon Mallory, Babysitter's Club book number 69. So there it is, guys. There's the craziness of my November TBR. I got this filmed in 30 minutes. Good for me. <laughs> I'm so happy about that. So yeah, really, really excited. I'm looking forward to November. It's going to be a great reading month. If it, if it falls into place the same way October did, 
November's going to be great and I hope December's great too if that's the case and I can finish off my year with some great reading. I'm looking forward to all these books. I'm really looking forward to participating in nonfiction November. If you guys have been on the fence about it, it's fabulous. Follow, go, go look at Olive's channel. She has so many great recommendations. As someone who did not consider myself to be a nonfiction reader, I have found so many great nonfiction books that I have absolutely loved. And there's a little something for everybody. So don't forget that either. So anyway, guys, until my next video, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye guys. Thank you.